welcome to the inside of an Audi SQ7 where, if I may, I need to talk some numbers, quite a few numbers of some significance. One, 435 metric horsepower, 429 brake. Two, 2,300 kilos or thereabouts, three, seven seats as standard as a four litre V8. Does 62 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds, costs 70,000 quid. And then there's the most significant number of all, 664 pounds foot of torque from 1,000 RPM, which is an astonishing amount of torque from no revs, effectively. I mean, that's just, just over idle. I cannot think of another car that develops peak torque from 1,000 revs, except something like an electric car, which of course develops peak torque from no revs at all. Now, the way Audi's done that, it's got this four liter V8 twin turbocharged diesel engine. It's got sequential turbo, so one gets going early, then an exhaust valve opens at a certain revs, and the other turbo kicks in too. But from low revs, it has an electrically operated compressor. Not an electric turbocharger, because of course it's not a turbo, because it's not doing what a turbo does, but it's doing the compressing bit. It's chucking in the air. And because it's electric and it spins up very quickly from naught to 70,000 RPM in a quarter of a second, I believe, that means there is almost no, Audi says, almost no turbo lag. Well, if I chuck the gearbox across into manual mode and leave it there, and then go from very low revs, I put my foot down, and there is instant acceleration in a manner that you just don't get in a turbocharged car. I mean, turbochargers just don't spin that quickly in response to throttle inputs. They just don't do it. Why is it 48 volts? Well, to get enough power to make it spin quickly. So you either have to increase the current in amps, which you can't do because you end up with massively thick cables, or you have to increase the voltage, which you can do by, well, the fact is there's a, a four litre V8 engine in the front. So if you want to generate some power, you can. So as well as the normal 12 volt battery, this car also has a 48 volt lithium ion battery in the boot. Audi also uses it in an uncoupling anti-roll bar. So in a straight line, this SQ7 has loose anti-roll bars and then as you turn a corner, it uses a 48 volt resistance motor effectively to tighten things up and really minimize body roll. Bentley Bentayga does exactly the same, exactly the same thing. And this engine really sounds mega actually. Let me go through some drive modes. If I put it into dynamic, I get a bit of extra woofle from the exhaust. It's got a symposer back there. It doesn't play it through the speakers, but it just augments the noise a bit. And it sounds good. It sounds especially purposeful at idle. It sounds like a big, powerful power boat. Audi Mc Audi face or something. Yeah, I hope you can hear it properly because it sounds, to my ears, quite possibly the nicest sounding diesel engine in production. And the rest of the package is all very Audi Q7, so it's pretty nice inside. It feels like a tall estate car, if you like, rather than an all out 4x4, and that's a deliberate Audi thing. People like the fact that it has these sort of high window lines. It does mean it's very difficult to see where the bonnet ends. In the Q7, I mean any 2.3 ton SUV, to be fair, perhaps Porsche Cayenne aside, is not exactly a driver's car. But these sophisticated electronic systems make a significant difference. I mean, this is still not a great driver's car. It's a fast Audi, so it's got slightly numb steering, really numb, really numb steering. It's very peculiar. It's not a natural, easy car to drive, but it's very quiet, it's very refined. But make no mistake, although the application of the 48 volt system is not perhaps at its, at its most brilliant here, there is no arguing with the actual principle of it itself. Audi has got the 48 volt system now. Before not very long, everybody will have it. And it's not just turbochargers, compressors, suspension systems. It'll extend through to telematics, it'll extend through to semi-autonomous driving when electronics can take over steering and braking and stuff like that. It just has the extra oomph and capacity to do a lot more for you. So yeah, should you buy an SQ7? I'm not sure. Should you think it is a very significant car? Absolutely.